This is a quick overview of this 1969 Ford F100. This is a second owner car. I am the second owner of it, buying it from the original owner. It's a fully uh, decked out system, so we'll kind of go front to back. So in the back, it's got mud flaps. It has a full steel flatbed to it. Um, the bed itself can be completely flat this cage that's on it with tent you'll notice there are pins and cotter keys the tent comes off of it the tent comes along with it just because um, and then the silver portion is actually a lift gate to which there is a button right here which if you just pull the button the gate lifts open as you can see there's pistons to pick it up uh, I was going to put it back on it so that it could be totally enclosed for camping, so on and whatnot, but I have yet to do it. Uh, reverse lights, brake lights, and turn signals. Brake lights and turn signals are in the same red light, um, whereas the backup lights are on their own. It has method 15-inch uh, by 10-inch aluminum uh, wheels. It's followed up by leaf spring in the rear. It does have new gas shocks on it, as well as it does have a new drive shaft. The drive shaft, uh, there's nothing wrong with it. It, uh, it was just getting old and a little bit of noise coming from it, so I had it replaced. It has new exhaust and a new transmission on it. Uh, the exhaust comes all the way back to the rear differential and splits off of there. This is the only main spot of damage to the vehicle, this corner here. The truck does come with the replacement corner uh, to fix this, and in fact, you didn't necessarily have to repair it. It probably could just be cut back and bonded, but I do have a new corner all the same. There are tie downs along the bed. There's three on each side. Uh, as well as little loops that these ropes run through for hooking bungee cords and so on. The cab itself is an orange color. Side trim is all aluminum. It does have the California mirrors. These mirrors are nice because they give you a full view of what's behind you, uh, and they stick out quite a ways so you can see all around it. Glass and seals are all uh, been replaced, as you can see, and the seals go all the way around so no water leaks when it rains. The drip rail, which is commonly a place for intense rust, there is no rust down this drip rail at all. The gasket's relatively new, uh, and the black bit you see is just mildew. Front windshield. This is the front corner. Now the only spots of visible uh, damage are the corner I showed. A bit of pitting right here, and then a scrape that goes down the length of the car. Somebody actually did this while I was parked, and I did not know about it until later. Front bumper is the original bumper, original aluminum grill, and original fog lights. The lenses and the fog lights have been replaced. Uh, and then, of course, there's a winch on here. The winch does not come with it. The winch actually comes off. That tow hook that is on it will stay because it's welded to the bumper, and it's a good tow point or trailer latch down point. Around the other side, same story, except it's a little bit cleaner on this side. And then this is the only other Spot, which is where the seam, the cab seam was, and it's just kind of peeling back a little. Other California mirror, and then of course the gas tank. If we open the door here, which just to give you an idea, the door closes kind of like a gun safe. Nice and uh, solid closing. The key does work for the driver door. You can unlock and lock it. Inner door panel. Window rolls down without an issue. Rolls back up without an issue. Vent windows work. 
on both sides, all the same. If we go inside the cab, you'll notice we have lights. We have windshield wipers. We have heated seat switch, the spot where the choke originally was, and then the lighter. We also have the original in-dash unit. Little pull-out ashtray. And then lastly, we have the glove box. Now in the glove box is the radio system. Um, it is just a small amplifier that is hooked with an auxiliary cord to whatever you want to plug into it. Also the flasher switch for emergency flashers. you notice that they do flash there. And if we come around, you'll notice that the tail lights are flashing. Now in a normal circumstance, the turn signal would work, but at the moment it is not. Now there is an in-dash AC unit, which you see here. Wraps all the way around. There's a tachometer, gauges, fuel gauge, temp gauge, oil gauge, and accessory gauge, and mileage. Now the fuel gauge is right here. I took it off the dash and into a second hand gauge. And then everything else is pretty much stock. All of the in-dash system for the heat does work, so I'll show you that momentarily. Let's wrap around here to the engine. So this is a 390 Ford. It is fully built with ported heads, uh, larger intake, all aluminum, Holly carburetor, uh, electronic ignition, no points, nothing crazy like that. Upgraded electrical system, AC pump, flex fan, and then the radiator does have separate auxiliary fans that are on it. Ignition system, starter solenoid, and then secondary fuel, fuse box all here. The heater, uh, heated seats are hooked to this fuse box as well as some other accessories inside. Um, that's actually the pump for the uh, windshield washer fluid, which actually if we just take this and touch it to 12 volts, you'll hear it comes on and sprays away. Which is kind of cool. Outside of that, um, I upgraded to uh, larger negative and positive lines for better ground and uh, transfer of electricity. Now this is a cold start. I will put my hand down on the engine. Um, if the engine had been running this would this would be pretty warm. It's not nice and cold. I wish I had um, a temp gun to show that it was cold but it is it is cold. No, um, no pre-running anything like that. So we're gonna swing around here and start it up. Now on a cold start, pumping the gas twice always is what the manual says, but um, we'll see if it'll start without it. Yep, started no problem. When the engine's cold at a sit still, it'll run 50 pounds of oil pressure. Uh, as you drive it, the oil pressure and the oil gets thinner, it drops. It currently has 10W40 in it. I, on my next oil change, was going to switch to 2050, which is, seems to be what everybody recommends. Um, but right now it's just 1040. Um, I'll turn the windshield wipers on. Uh, I'll show you that that works. Um, I'm not going to turn it to heat, but turn the fan on. Now this is the heat to the car. And then you have an adjuster here for defrost or uh, for the floor heat. And then of course, from uh, temperature wise, you can go from just air blowing to warm. 
Uh, this system has nothing to do with the AC though. We're gonna swing back around to the engine. It idles extremely low. It's 500 RPMs is the idle. Uh, that was just uh, what I did for the sake of doing it. It can be pushed up if you want, and it can even go down about another uh, 100 or 200 and still run. And it'll sit here and drive idle like this all day long. It's a super, super solid. Uh, engine runs great power steering works The headers are wrapped on this side not wrapped on the other. I only did this because the power steering system and the uh, AC system ran past that so I wanted to ensure that it was protected from that heat So the coup de gras, which is why this car is so loved is the AC system here um, the way the knobs work, this knob here controls the speed of the AC. This knob here, it was originally designed to turn it on and off. It's broken inside, which isn't a big deal. Right here on the uh, actual system, I added another switch. All you do, push the switch, system kicks on. And uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna set that there. And we'll come back and take a look at that in a second. Currently showing just under 100 degrees, which is what the temperature is out today. Now you will hear the pump making a weird sound. It just probably needs a new pulley bearing. It works fine, and I've been running it like this since I put it in. That sound you can't hear in the cab with the AC running anyways, so it doesn't really bother me. We're gonna jump in the car here. And as we leave the car sit, it'll get colder and colder. It probably pushes about 60 to 50 degrees once it gets to full cool down temperature when it gets full pressure. Um, but just as a quick demonstration, it's holding nice and steady at 60. Uh, the oil pressure you'll see went from 50 to now just over 40. When I put it into uh, drive to go, you'll see it drops just under 40. And then when I put it back into neutral, it comes up over. Heated seats, which is kind of backwards, but if we want, we can turn the heated seats on. The LED lights come on, and then the inside the seat, uh, this portion here and this portion here, and it's already getting warm, actually is, uh, is where the heat pad is. Again, at the AC gauge. Yep, still holding steady at 60 degrees. You'll notice the RPMs. When I go to drive, drops to about 500. Put it back in park, jumps to about 700. All right, so it's starting to uh, drop in temperature. A bit from where it was. Now it's starting to go under 60. All in all, really solid running truck. You can see that the fuel gauge is working and the heat to the car, the temp gauge to the car is starting to raise. Normal is just at the right arm of the M. Uh, you don't want it to go past that M because that uh, that's close to the overheating area. You should be able to see that very edge of the M if you can't see it, then that's a sign that there may be uh, something going on. Um, so now, turn the AC pump off. We're gonna jump out of the truck. Uh, parking brake works, by the way. It's right here. And, and that 
holds it. Also, our high beam switch works, no problem. And now that it, uh, the system's fully open, you'll hear that the engine's running nice and smooth now. Really quiet, too, for such a big engine. The build went uh, really smooth with it. The guy I use for my engine build does a great job. He's based out of Greer, South Carolina. And you'll hear no hiccuping or burping when you shut the engine off from uh, too much gas in the system or whatever the case may be. So with the key um, for the lock, you just lock the door, unlock the door. It, it does work. Locked, uh, uh, locked, unlock, lock, and key comes out. So this, this uh, all works fine. Everything else is ready to go. It can be driven. Uh, as far as you'd like. I, I haven't taken it over 40 miles away, but uh, it probably could be driven much over that. I've always been uh, in love with this truck. Hate to get rid of it, but it's a very, very solid truck. Uh, I just have too many vehicles going on here, so have to cut the herd. Um, I'll go now and show the manual. All right, this is the original 1969 South Carolina plate. Um, it's uh, the original plate that was with the car. Um, unfortunately, it was not the original plate on the documentation in the paperwork. I'm not sure if that was a, the original plate was a dealer plate that they used or if it was just a um, something else. Maybe they switched plates or whatever. This is the original bill of sale from Coleman Motors Incorporated. It tells you Doris Garrett, the owner, based out of Traveler's Rest, South Carolina, and all the features. So it originally had a 360, which has been upgraded to a 390. It's the Calypso Coral, which is the orange color that it is. Explorer package, which it is the Explorer edition, which is a very rare. Uh, bright body moldings, wheel covers, glove box ornamentation, special paint, everything that could be added was added. Originally it had a cruise matic which was a two-speed system uh, with power brakes. It no longer has the cruise matic It's been changed to a C4. Next is the window sticker. Again, it lists out all the features that came with it um, and even lists out the original sales price of $24,29.74. And then all the added pricing, the engine, um, the body uh, molding, and if you wanted a rear chrome bumper, you had to pay $37.80. Next is the uh, sales documentation. The original title. I actually had the original title when I got the car. You'll see it's stamped May 12th, 1968, which was when the car rolled off the lot. Um, and the back of the uh, title. And then a couple more translucent copies because uh, I did opaque and translucent. Uh, the Fleet Credit Union, where she got the, the money, the $600 down that she put towards the car. Um, she got two money orders um, in here. Uh, the original spare owner's card that you take to the Ford dealership. All the information about the uh, locking system. The extra VIN tag for the truck and the VIN tag sticker. Uh, looks like she bought some gaskets for the car. This is the original um, auto parts place for uh, wheels and tires. The original owner's manual to the, uh, the truck. The original folder that everything came from the dealer with. The original salesman that sold the truck. Uh, the battery warranty. Came with a came with an, a pretty extensive Sears battery warranty. Um, then these are all the registration paperwork through all the years that she had the car registered on the road. She had some repair done in 1982. She had some gaskets and a clamp put on. She paid eight dollars and eleven cents. Really breaking the bank there. And then this is some more modern stuff. So this is uh, moving up through time, 1986. It was still on the road driving. Um, here we are again, insurance cards in 95. Insurance cards up to 97 and 98. And then we have 
right, it's an older one. And then mine, when I took possession of the car, which is 2012. And then some of the stuff that was in the glove box, a French tickler condom and some other little snippets about the car. And then these are all my information about the truck. So this is what I did to it. So this was a build of the engine, 850, uh, 580 bucks or 528 bucks rather, um, for a 390 build from BNM Machine. These are the information for all of the uh, wheel cylinders when all the brakes were redone. Uh, Forty-five dollars for all that. We have seventy dollars here for all the. Um, let's see. Speed bleeder, looks like more brake stuff. We had valve covers, the aluminum valve covers that I bought. Master cylinder, uh, gasket valve covers. Got another receipt here for some push rods when I was building the engine. Um, another receipt here for uh, high energy push rods. I bought a couple different ones. Um, okay, this is the transmission fluid flush and transmission rebuild sheet. This is all the stuff that I did for that. This is the uh, some more parts that I ordered from the camshaft to the valve lifters, timing set. Uh, camshaft timing set again. And more paperwork from what I had done with the transmission. Some aftermarket componentry. Brake pads, Speedmaster. This was a, let's see, rocker system. So this is all the rocker system that was put in. Spark plugs. And that kind of concludes the manual. It comes along with it in this metal casing. Plate comes along with it too. And that's everything that comes with the truck. Hope you enjoy.